In this lecture, we're going to quickly introduce the concept of thread synchronization and we're going to basically set the ground for this chapter where we're going to talk about different tools that we can use in Java to build synchronization between threads. So before diving into this, it's kind of mandatory to really understand what we're trying to achieve with this synchronization between threads. So in other words, what actually is this synchronization and why do we need to do it? So let's say we got two threads which are running in, uh, in our Java application and those threads are executing a bunch of instructions. They are working with data and basically there are two types of data that those threads can work with. We got local data and we know that this is actually allocated in the stack area of our threads, which is a memory area private to each thread. So no thread is able to see the local variables of another thread because they are stored in different stack memory areas. But usually in real life applications, threads have to communicate by the use of a shared resource. And that resource can be even a simple variable allocated on the heap of the parent process of those two threads. Or it can also be a file on the local disk on which two threads have access and they are performing read write operations. Or it can be a database or pretty much anything that uh, you can think of in this space. Now, when those two threads are using the exact same data, they can just do read operations. And essentially when they're doing this, there's basically no issue because they just uh, see the exact same value and they can work on that value on their own local context, right? The problem starts to show up when are bringing the write operation into the picture because this write operation may bring some inconsistencies in our program. So let's get into more details to understand how this works. Let's say we got this variable x initialized with zero, just a very simple integer allocated on the heap. When we've got two threads, which are executing those two simple instructions, where they're just assigning different values to this variable, we can assume that those two threads are executing uh, those um, instructions in the exact same time. The question is, what is the value of X at the end of the execution of this program? And the answer is that we can have two options, right? And they depend on how the threads are being scheduled. Option one, if thread two goes first, it will write the value 20 into the variable X. And finally, thread one will go and it will overwrite that value with its own value, which is the value 10, right? In this way, we, get the, we got the option one, and at the end, the value of X will be 10. If the threads are scheduled the other way around, so thread one first and thread to the second one, we got the option two. Now, if we think in a broader way of this very simple program with only two threads, we can see that at the end of this program, the output, which is in this case, the value of the variable X, depends on the way those threads are scheduled. And this is generally something that we don't want in a multi-threaded application or in any Java application, because this means that our program is not consistent. It depends on a parameter that we cannot control. So we generally want to have controls on our program. Now let's take a slightly different example where we got an increment operation that's being executed by each thread. This example is actually used by many thread synchronization introductory tutorials because it is very relevant in this space. And this incrementation actually involves a read operation first, where basically the value of that shared variable is kind of copied into a local variable, which is private to each thread. So you can assume that threads are copying the value from the shared memory into their own stack area. So that's one operation. And then the threads are incrementing that value again in their stack memory. And finally, they write that the result of that addition back into the shared variable, right? Which is in the shared memory, in the heap address space. So there are two operations involved here, a read and a write. Now, what is our expectation, right? When we run those two threads in the exact same amount of time, we have a specific expectation. And this one is that first we got the initial value, which is zero, right? So this is the step one. And by step, I mean the moment when we write 
data into this variable. And if thread1 goes first, it will increment the value and we expect that the value of uh, x after thread1 is finished to be 1. And finally on step 3, thread2 is executed and we expect that thread2 will see the value written by thread1 and it will add 1 to that value. So finally the value of x will be 2. And of course if the threads are scheduled in the other way around, we kind of expect the same output, right? So, so when this program is finalized, we want the value of x to be 2. Now in reality the things are a bit different because the following scenario may happen. So on step 1 we got the initial value and if thread 1 will go first, so if this one is scheduled first, it will read the value x from the shared memory which will be initially 0 and then it will increment that value and write it back to the shared variable. And let's assume that this write operation is the step 2 of our uh, chain of steps. Now when thread 2 is going to be scheduled, it is highly possible that this thread will read the exact same value 0 from the shared variable. So in other words, there are high chances that thread 2 will not see the update that thread 1 did on this variable. Because between the read operation and the write operation that thread 1 is doing, there is a time gap. Those operations are executed usually very fast, but there is a time gap between them, right? And in between that time gap, thread 2 can actually go and read the value of that variable. And once this is actually done, thread2 has the value 0 for the shared variable in its local context. So it just increments that value to 1 and finally writes it back to the shared variable. So at the end, the final value of x will be 1 and not 2, which is what we actually expect. So this is essentially the main problem that may happen when we got read after write operations, essentially. And uh, multi-threading applications. Now this particular problem was discovered in the early stages of multi-threading. So it was actually solved by language designers. And basically the only way in which we can solve this problem is to make sure that this operation is executed by only one thread at a time. So we want to make sure that only one thread is executing this write after read operation. So in Java and in other multi-threading enabled languages, we got this capability of specifying which instruction or set of instructions to be executed by a single thread. And this chain of instructions that we can specify is actually called a critical section. So in other words, thread synchronization is essentially a coordination between threads in order to get a consistent output of our application. And this particular example here, where we enforce the fact that only one thread should execute an operation, is called mutual exclusiveness. Because the threads are essentially exclude themselves mutually when they're trying to execute this critical section. But there are also other ways of coordinating threads. And the whole idea of this coordination is to get consistency into our application. That's the, the, the main message of this, um, of this particular lecture, right? We don't want the program to behave in, in any way it wants, right? We want to establish a well-defined control and behavior of our application in order to get predictable output.